Hi, it's Summer, and these are my five-star predictions for this year. This year, I want to make some content kind of around my five-star predictions, and I thought it would be fun to just first tell you what those predictions are, so you'll kind of like be prepared for when those videos come later. This is also a little bit of like my 2023 reading plans, because these are like the top books that I would like to read this year. Also, I'm sorry about the lighting. It looks like I'm filming at nighttime, but it's actually just like a really rainy, dark, dreary day, which I normally love, but it's not really great for filming days. <laughs> first is Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. I've literally heard nothing but good things about this book. Everybody else that I know has been rating it five stars. I think it's supposed to be kind of like a cozy mystery. I've heard that it's really funny. I think this one is about a failing author who, when she's meeting with her agent or something out in public, they're talking about her book and I guess it's like a thriller or something where she's like killing people in it or something. And I guess a woman overhears this conversation and mistakes Finley Donovan for a hit woman. And she ends up going and talking to her about like killing her husband for her. This one is mainly on the list just because I trust the people that have rated it five stars. So I'm excited to get to it. After that, I have Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. I actually started this book, but it just didn't really feel like the timing was right, so I soft DNF'd it and I would really like to read it this year. This one has kind of a confusing synopsis. I think that it follows mainly three different perspectives, like three different people throughout different places in time. Maybe there's more than three, I can't really remember. There's one present day, there's one far in the future, and there's one set pretty far back in time. Yeah, 1453, so pretty far back. <laughs> And I guess all of their stories are kind of connected in some way. The genre tags for this one are historical fiction, fantasy, science fiction, literary fiction, and books about books, which is one of my favorite things to read. So I don't normally love historical fiction, but I think that this one is going to work for me. From what I listened to so far on the audiobook, which I was really enjoying the audiobook, so that's how I'm going to continue reading it when I pick it back up. But just from what I have read and listened to so far, it kind of was reminding me a little bit of like Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, which is one of my favorite books, so that's perfect. Perfect. But it's not reminding me of it so much in like the subject matter more just kind of like of the vibes and stuff It's a really big book I think it's over 600 pages and it's a little bit intimidating But this is one that I am definitely really excited to get to this year after that, I have Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is one that I'm so excited to get to. I think this is kind of like an alternate history and the characters are going to this place called Babel. And I think they're either being trained there or something. I think it's some kind of like library and there's a lot to do with like language and translating things. The main thing that's making me want to read this though is that people are saying it has dark academia vibes. And this year is going to be my dark academia era. I'm very excited to read all of the dark academia books. So this is definitely a five-star prediction. After that, I have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Tasha Kazu. Kawaguchi. This sounds like it's going to be a book that makes me cry, and I normally don't pick up books that are kind of described like that. That's why I haven't read any of Frederick Bachman's books. Even though I'm sure they're good, I just don't really like to like force myself to cry or like feel too emotional. If it happens to me in a book, then I'm fine with it, but I don't like want to put myself through that on purpose. <laughs> From what I've heard about this one though, it's about a coffee shop where if you order a coffee and sit in this like specific booth, it will allow you to travel back in time. And I think that you only stay in the coffee shop when you time travel and the time travel only lasts for as long as your coffee is warm. And I think it just follows different people that are revisiting their past and people from their past. It just sounds like it's gonna be a really sweet emotional read and it has a cat on the cover. So I just feel like that's another sign that I need to pick it up. <laughs> After that, I have How High We Go in the Dark and it's by Sequoia Nagamatsu. Right off the bat, this one says that it's for fans of Station Eleven. So I'm already ready to read it because of that. The genre tags for this one are science fiction, dystopia, fantasy, short stories, speculative fiction, and literary fiction. I love all of those genres. So I'm pretty sure from what I've heard, this is a short story collection about life after some kind of pandemic or something bad has happened in the world. And I think all of the characters in the short stories are connected somehow. Also, I just love this cover, it's beautiful. But I saw this one on a few people's um, favorite books of 2022 list. And so I just think I'm really gonna like this one. Next, I have a book that's been on my TBR for so long. I think this is one of the books that's been on my TBR the longest. And so I absolutely have to read it this year. <laughs> it's The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I feel like the title kind of says it all, but the back says, the circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. And I feel like that little blurb right there just like shows you her writing style. I absolutely love Erin Morgenstern's writing. The Starless Sea is my favorite book and I read it back in 2020 and I still haven't picked this up. Like what's wrong with me? I'm just so ready to read her writing again because I just love it. I've heard that the world is just so whimsical and magical in this book. I feel like the vibes of this book are going to be just like 10 out of 10, but I think this is the year for me to finally get to this one. After that, I have A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. 
I'm obsessed with this cover. I honestly don't really know a ton about this. I think it's historical fiction, it's YA. I think it has some fantasy woven in, kind of like magical realism stuff. And I've also heard from people that it has dark academia vibes. So again, 2023 is the year of dark academia. So I just really wanna pick this one up. I've seen some people make mood boards for this book that just look like it's totally gonna be my vibe. And I've also seen people fan cast the main guy love interest as the guy that plays Kaz Brecker in the Shadow and Bone series on Netflix. And I am all about that, <laughs> but I really feel like I'm gonna love it. After that, I have Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore and it's by Robin Sloan. This is one that I started the audiobook for a few years ago and it just like wasn't clicking for me. So I soft DNF'd it, but I've known that I wanna pick it back up because Sourdough by Robin Sloan is one of my other favorite books. And this one just totally sounds like my vibe. The main thing that really pushed me to read it this year and add it to this list though, was Gwen on her podcast. It's called Talk Bookish to Me. You need to listen to it if you don't already. But it was recently on one of her 12 days episodes, but like it just really made me want to read it again. So I'm really excited to pick it up this year. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's about. I think it's about this guy who gets a job at this bookstore and there's a lot of like interesting people that come in and these people are only ever interested in one book, but they never check anything out. They just kind of like read it and then leave and come back every once in a while. And like, it kind of gives me Starla Sea vibes a tiny bit with kind of like the book within a book kind of situation. So I'm really excited to get to it. After that, I have a romance and it's Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I'm actually going to be buddy reading this during the second half of January with my friend Heather. I'll put a link to her Instagram and stuff in the description. I'm just really happy to be reading this with her and it just sounds like it's gonna be so good. I have not heard a bad thing about this. Pretty much everybody that I know has rated this five stars. I guess it's kind of an age gap romance, but the guy is younger. He comes from a small town, she comes from a big city. It just sounds so good, I'm ready to read it. And then my last book for this list is Malice House by Megan Shepard. It has the trope of a daughter returning home after her father has passed away and he like kept secrets from her. Her father was an author, so when she's going through all of his stuff, going through his house and stuff, she finds an unpublished manuscript. It's called Bedtime Stories for Monsters. It has short stories that crawl with horrific monsters and enigmatic humans that exist somewhere between this world and the next. It sounds so creepy and just like my kind of book. So I'm really excited to pick this one up. I've said I'm excited to pick every single one of these up because I just can't ever stop saying the word excited in my videos, but it's true. I'm just like really hyped for these books. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if I need to prioritize any of these and read them sooner than others. Thank you so much for watching though. I hope that your reading so far this year is going well and I will see you in the next one.